Drive across northern Germany and you'll see forests of wind turbines. They're part of Germany's plan to get most of its electricity from renewables by 2050. In some countries, people call these things ugly, even dangerous. Somebody. Here, people can't get enough of them. Allowed. Just ask Loud. the Brodersen family. Zu verrückt. Seit 2003 nehmen wir hier auf dem Aha. Ja, als Bauer. Ja, wir sind Bauern und They own a share in a community und, uh, wind farm next to their house. Keine Nachbarn beklagen über wie laut sie sind oder. Nee, weil sie alle dabei sind, ne? Weil sie alle Almost all the neighbors are equal shareholders. Dag and his wife Annika don't just see the wind farm as an investment. Und, ja, wir wollen Zukunft generieren. <laughs> Yeah. Without it, they couldn't stay here doing what they love. So, first we have to be kind. And that's pig farming. Guck mal, nun mager die. My grey here, it's not from uh, wind turbines. My grey here is from farming. Because it's uh, very difficult markets. We got some years where the wind turbines make maybe 50% from uh, our income. So it's quite important thing for us. So this is for the love of it, is it? Yeah, yeah. This is our heart is for agriculture. Yeah, that was uh, the barn for the pigs. It's also enabled them to live an almost self-sufficient lifestyle. Let's have a look around. They grow much of their food. Solar panels provide almost yes. all their winter Here heating. You can see uh, wind turbines, solar panels, and also uh, biogas is not only the money we want to make a future for our kids maybe here on the farm if they want and yeah so you can have a good lifestyle here in this coastal province of schleswig-holstein almost all the wind farms are owned by local communities for the people who see them every day they're not an eyesore they're an income now Germany's building even bigger farms, completely out of sight. Well, today we're all kitted up for something few outsiders see. As big as the onshore farms are here, out there are the monsters of new energy for offshore wind. Twenty kilometers out to sea, we get our first glimpse of the latest offshore wind farm. Well, this is an incredible sight, a wind farm of 80 turbines right out at sea. And they're massive, 120 meter wingspans, uninterrupted wind every day, and you don't have to worry about the neighbors. This privately funded farm opened in August at a cost of 1.3 billion euros. On top of that, the farm needs constant maintenance in highly challenging conditions. So why build a wind farm offshore when you can build them on land? Well, the big advantage is the steady winds and even much more wind uh, than on shore. And this is exactly why, it, for the investors, it makes perfectly sense to spend more money for logistics. In one hour, a single turbine can generate all the electricity an average family would use in a year. But offshore energy can be twice as expensive to produce. What's made these wind farms profitable is government regulation. Germany requires utilities to buy renewable power at a mandated price. It is more expensive than today's nuclear uh, energy that we buy, but at the end, if you stop such a wind farm, of course, there's no cost afterwards that you need to pay for, except for dismantling them and, and or bringing them back uh, in the harbor. At the end, definitely, this is my personal belief, it will be cheaper, yes.
You can see the winners at the annual wind fair in the nearby town of Husa. Entrepreneurs have grown rich on a national policy of energy vendor, meaning energy transformation. Well, it means that we change the entire system of energy production. We will not use nuclear electricity anymore. We are always also moving out of fossil energy and heading on to almost 100% renewable. But the policy sent power prices soaring. On top of that, families pay a renewable levy of more than $300 a year. Actually, at the same time, they are paying less for the electricity. So we are kind of changing where the money is being paid. The electricity prices have dropped a lot due to the new renewables. Prices are still higher than other European countries and emissions haven't dropped as fast as hoped. After the Fukushima disaster, Germany sped up the closure of nuclear reactors. That made the economy even more reliant on dirty brown coal. This is a, a big issue. So the coal industry says, oh, we can't just disappear. And so there are plans to say, OK, you don't have to disappear from today until tomorrow. But yes, you must know that within 30, 35 years, there's not a future for you in Germany. Clean energy entrepreneurs are confident the future belongs to them. Henning Holst is green from the tip of his toes to the top of his head. Ah, Tesla. Yeah. Okay. You want to see, you want to see the engine? Show yeah, the engine? absolutely. Big disappointment. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Where's it gone? Well, look around here. Plenty of Teslas. It's, uh, it's the right car for the, for the people in the industry. And a, a colleague of mine ordered one yesterday. Uh-huh. Yeah. Henning was an anti-nuclear activist before he became a wind tycoon. He's convinced wind and solar will leave nuclear in the dust. So what's the acceleration like? It's very impressive. Oh, oh my god. Oh, you're a lead foot. That's enough. I've got, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Wind farming has certainly turbocharged the local economy, with the once dying shipyard now building turbines. The shipyard produces about one to two machines per day, and they are being erected either here in the area, but a lot of them for export. So they go to UK, France, other parts of Europe. Some of them even go into the United States. You don't find unemployed mechanics or electricians here in the area. They've all been sucked up by the, by the wind industry. They now have 30% of their electricity coming from renewables. They've created 400,000 jobs. They've done it in a way that has uh, decentralized power so that communities uh, own and control the electricity generation, are able to keep the resources. So we have these models that clearly work. We're doing it. The industry now appears unstoppable. Just 25 years ago, there was hardly a single turbine here. Now Schleswig-Holstein has more than two and a half thousand. Across Germany, there are 22,000. Now, to understand just how big a part of the economy these turbines are, they're already producing more electricity than this province of two million people needs. And what's really extraordinary is that they're aiming to triple that, to become a major energy exporter. So it's like North Sea oil, it's just North Sea air. High power prices don't appear to have stopped their popularity. According to a survey part funded by the government, 93% of Germans support Energiewende.